So, you're my lawyer. Yeah, well, I suppose you came here to hear my story. It seems everybody wants to hear it these days. So, by all means, let's start from the beginning. Well, my parents moved here from Poland when I was still a baby. So I've spent my entire adult life and the majority of my childhood here in Chicago. This is where, in 1914, I met my very first husband, John. I loved John. He was sweet and kind and everybody used to talk about how in love we were like two turtle doves. But as time went on, as some happy marriages do, things started to change. Now I know some people say that you never really know who it is that you're married to until you're already in it. And I think that was true. Certainly for me at least. I learned a lot about myself and what I could do. But, as I'm sure you know, or have at least read, John had a heart condition, which was the reason for his death. Yeah. We didn't really talk about it openly, but I didn't think that'd make much of a difference. Now, after his death, it was tragic, but things started to change for me. I uh, started to be able to foresee death, in a way. I started to predict the deaths of people around me, some family even, pets, definitely, a dog here, a cat there, and that seemed to follow me up until today, but it was just kind of odd in the beginning. So I didn't really make too much importance of it. And I also distracted myself with my second husband, Joseph. Joseph and I had a short marriage. It felt a little bit like um, Romeo and Juliet, but I'm hardly a Juliet at my age. And the thing I remember most about Joseph is he absolutely loved my cooking. And I loved cooking for him. Anything that he wanted. Soups, stews, roasts, tea and coffee. He loved his coffee with a lot of sugar. So sweet just like him. I predicted Joseph's death too. That was quite tragic. I told a few people about that one and, you know, I think it was going to be inevitable after too long and it was. After a while, after just a brief, wonderful period together, He died, and thank goodness for my two former husbands because they left me life insurance, otherwise I don't know how I'd be able to survive on my own as an immigrant and as a woman, but tragic still nonetheless. Also tragic was... uh, I did have some neighbor kids pass. 
at one point. So young. Those kids really uh, had a sweet tooth, just like Joseph. I'd make them candies from time to time and they'd just gobble them up like little monsters. But after a while, they started to get sick. And I knew, I knew it wouldn't be long before they passed too. I'd sit and watch them from time to time. The glow that they used to have in their eye starting to dwindle. Eventually you'd see less and less of them and until you just stop seeing them at all. And you knew. You knew they passed like every other person I had predicted before them. During this time, I had a roommate named Meyer. Things went well with us in the beginning. He was only there for a short while. And I'm not sure what happened, but Meyer just vanished. Now, police never found a body and nobody uh, made any reports or saw him after a certain point in time, including myself, but it was uh, odd having somebody just disappear into thin air like that. But by that time, I had started a romance with my third husband, Frank. Frank was an interesting man. He had a lot of inner turmoil, let's say. And maybe that was due to the fact that I did tell him early on about me predicting his death. I don't think he liked that very much. In fact, I told everybody about it. Friends, family, even our landlady. I would joke with them that, you know, he only had two inches to live. Some people found that a little difficult. I don't think that they understood my openness with it. But, you know, I spent as much time with him as I could during the days that he grew sicker and sicker, making him whatever he wanted to eat and administering medicine to him if he needed it. I would sit by his bedside and hold his hand or knit and say, it's going to be any day now. I even uh, knit a morning hat. I'll probably wear it to trial. Figure that'll be uh, good for me. But even as he got sicker, I don't know exactly what pushed him over the edge into death, but I think it had something to do with the coffin. I found a bargain coffin for $30, which is just simply unheard of, so of course I purchased it. And when I brought it back to our building, I inquired with the landlady whether I could store it in the basement until his death. Well, she found that a uh, bit insensitive of me. And she told me that if I tried to store it there, that she would kick me and the coffin and my husband out. And of course, in Frank, in his condition, I knew that couldn't happen, so I was forced to bring it upstairs 
And there it sat, in the room, just looming over him, almost staring at him like death itself, just waiting and watching his inevitable demise. Frank's death was tragic, and again, thank goodness, he had life insurance, so that provided me with enough stability until I met Joe, my last husband, in 1921. Can you imagine, not even a full decade, four husbands, countless tragedies, and yet I'm considered a murderess. Where's the sympathy? But, obviously Joe, they found arsenic in his system. And I told officers that the common household is just filled with all sorts of poisons. And no offense to you or yours, but men don't always seem to be the most capable around the house, and he might have just simply mistaken one thing for another. I mean, we have boxes of rat poison. I've got quite a large one that my cousin Nellie gave me that I'm sure you know about, which is why she's also in custody. But even past that, there are things like outdated medicine or old cosmetics. It could even be from some of the food providers or tobacco industries. You know how they often fluff their products with sawdust or plasters, anything to save a dime here and there. So, put simply, it could just be that he did it to himself over time and not understanding. But it's hard to say. I suppose given all the evidence, you know, people will come to their own conclusions, but at least now you know that the story that I've told you here today, that's my truth. Now, whether it's the truth, I suppose that will be for, um, for others to decide.